Hi, I'm Mitchell Dale and this is Rugby League Week's Friday Arvo Footy. Joined on the couch today by Martin Lenahan Mitch. from Rugby League Week. Eric Groth from the Cronulla Sharks. Boys, huge show. Got the Encouragement Award. We've got a great room up from the Mole. Uh, let's kick things off with the big game tonight between the Eagles and the Roosters. It's a grand final replay. We went out and caught up with Boyd Cordner and Jared Aria Hargraves this week. Let's have a listen to what they had to say. Um, yeah, it is just another match, obviously. But, yeah, it's definitely, like, there will be more feeling in it, especially I've uh, been the grand final rematch. But, you know, Manly are always a tough team and they've been they've been a top team for years now. So, you know, we're going to have to be better than what we were last few weeks if we want to get the win here Friday night. Oh, well, mate, they've all their players, you know. Um, and obviously Anthony Watmau and Glenn Stewart, you know, they're the most experienced campaigners there. So, you know, they've, they've never had a bad game in their career. So they're going to be um, they're going to be tough to stop, but you know it's not just them; it's their whole pack, and you know especially their backs and their halves. You know, ex probably expecting Kieran Forum to be back this week, and you know they always lift against us. So yeah, we're definitely going to have to be on. All of them, mate. I guess um, you know, chalk in the middle, uh, Glenn Stewart, Gifty on the right edge, and um, made all their big boys up front. So I think you know we just got to play our part, uh, do our job, and uh, do it well. We're expecting a big game, a physical game, but um, yeah, hopefully for a big turnout as well. So it'll be good. That'll be physical. I reckon their aggression. Uh, they, they definitely get that good line speed uh, in defence, and uh, they'll be looking forward to getting off that line pretty early in the game and, and trying to, I guess, upset us and um, yeah, make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, mate. Both teams are on a high at the moment from winning like that. I guess um, you don't really expect to win them, but. When you do, mate, your confidence is really high. Um, you know, both teams will be rocking up on Friday and, and trying to do their part for the team. Should be an absolute uh, cracker there tonight, boys. The uh, the grand final rematch, always a huge game for these teams. The last 10 years, it's split five and five between the, the Premiers winning again or the, the beaten side taking revenge. But interesting, the last three years, we've had the Premiers win again. So big favour for the Roosters there. Mate, uh, I can't see the Roosters win this one. I, I don't know what it is. I think Manly, they're just one of them real mongrel packs and they have a big point to prove and I think they're going to do it, especially with uh, Wolfman coming out in the paper yesterday saying how keen he is to make amends. So, uh, yeah, across the board, Manly too tough, I think. Yeah, as you said, as Jared Maria Hargrove said, a really hard pack to crack Manly. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, I've played against both teams and I'll tell you what, they're one forward pack I don't enjoy running straight into. I always try and find a little step in my, my running game when we play the Manly side. So I just reckon they're just going to be a little bit too tenacious and have a big point to prove from losing the grand final. Yeah, look, both sides weren't great last week. I mean, they both got out of jail, you'd think. Yeah, no, they were lucky to get out of jail last week, Mitch. But I think you're right, Eric. They'll fire up big time. But I'm going to stick with the, uh, the Roosters in this one. I'm going to have to go Manly, mate. Too tough. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Eric. I'm going to take... Surprise, surprise. I'm going to take the Roosters on this one. Now, the other cracker of a game down there at Wollongong tonight, the Broncos and the Dragons. We went and caught up with Jared Beal. Talked to him particularly about the influence Gareth Widdop's had on the Dragons. Yeah, it's good. Um, he certainly um, helps me a lot. You know, gives me a lot of, I guess, good ball and that. So, you know, makes me happy and... And, you know, he helps the team out a lot. You know, he's added that spark to the team. And, um, you know, it's just been, uh, I think, uh, you know, we've just been thankful. And, you know, we can keep building on that and, um, you know, hopefully keep improving throughout the year. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think maybe, uh, I think last year, you know, we'd panic a bit, you know, when we get close to the line. But um, I think having Gareth there and and also, you know, the half halfback, you know, they've got a bigger role this year and they're really keeping, you know, everyone in the team composed and making sure everyone knows what they're doing. So it's just going to make us play better. Now, speaking of Jared Beal, uh, coming up against his former club, the Broncos, for the first time, of course, he was injured when the two teams met last year. Eric, you've been to a few clubs. What's it like when you come up against your old teammate? Mate, it's a lot tougher than players make out. They play it down a lot in the media. I think that everybody wants to show that they've made the right move or, you know, wants to prove to the club that let them go that, you know, they're in a better place now. It's, uh, yeah. Sounds a little bit like running into an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, it is, mate. You know, you just uh, like 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 the ex-girlfriend. You want your next girlfriend's got to be sexier. So it's like it's like you know me upgrading. From, I just got weird. Yeah. If we broke up, or I'd move on to McFly. I'd be very happy. You know, well, it's all pretty sexy, boys down at the Dragons at the moment. They're on fire at, at three and zip, and I reckon they can uh, they can get the money again this week. Yeah, mate, that's great to see Steve Price 
doing so well. You know, they, they said there was a question mark over his career and to be out 3-0, and unfortunately, against Cronulla, uh, one of them games was. It's uh, great to see a great bloke um, doing a lot better than what he was last year. Yep, you taking the Dragons? No, I'm going to take Brisbane because I think this week is the Dragons' biggest test and I don't think they've been really fully tested yet. I think this will, this will if, they, if they win this week, mate, they are, they are a genuine threat. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think this is their biggest test. Uh, I think the Broncos have been going really well up there. Probably unlucky not to get the cash last weekend. So huge test, probably a big test for both clubs. Absolutely. Uh, but it is, I think this is the Dragons' first real test. I reckon they're going to pass with flying colours. And with Marty again, I'm going to say the Dragons. Moving along now, Eric, you've gone and grabbed your massive boot. That means only one thing, the Encouragement Award. I grab, pardon? Yes, I grabbed my massive boot. Uh, this week's Encouragement Award goes to Brett Finch's teeth. Now, he signed a deal with Channel 9, and since doing that, before his first episode of whatever he was on, he went and got a whole new set of uh, gorgeous pearly whites. So I seen him out about a month ago, and he was, uh, I thought something different about him. I thought, this son, he just looks beautiful tonight. And uh, turns out he's got a whole new set of teeth and he's looking amazing. If you just get your nose fixed now, uh, you'll be a solid uh, four out of ten. I've got to say, Finchy. good play, boys, to uh, Channel 9. Finchy's been on fire. Our old mate Glenn Pallister there, Mitch, at the footy show. They're doing a good job and uh, I love the teeth as well. Mate, word has it he's got his old teeth in a mantelpiece uh, on his uh, fireplace. So, <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to go over and have a beer and have a look at those. Very good. There's the encouragement award to Brett Finch. Lots of man love from Eric Growth here in the show today. On your Finchy. Great story in Rugby League Week this week, our cover story boys, Semi Randrandra, all about uh, how just a few years ago he wouldn't sleep on a bed, he'd sleep on the floor and he wouldn't eat meat because he felt guilty that his parents and family back home in Fiji weren't so he didn't want to out here but he's come a long way since then. He is a for me, the good news story of 2014. So yeah, fantastic story in the, in the magazine this week. He's a real cult hero out there. Six tries already this season. Knocked up scoring tries, even late last year when he first came into the team. An absolute giant. You know, we've, we love the Fijian wingers in, in the NRL camp. We're at a few over the years. So, Eric, he's just another uh, mammoth human playing on the wing these days. Mate, he's, he's my favourite player. He's my favourite new player. Billy Slater's still number one. I love you, Bill. Uh, mate, he's just so exciting. He's so big and strong. And from all the reports, I spoke to Benny Smith uh, earlier yesterday and he was saying how nice a bloke he really is and how funny and good he is to have around the club. So he's just on the up and up. It's just when, when you debuted 1999, was it? Yeah, 99, yep. yep. You were considered a big winger. And now it's just half of the course that they're all giants who could play in the back row or, or on the wing. Yeah, gone are the days of the, the small winger and the smaller wingers, they have to be lightning fast and, and bring something to the table that, you know, could maybe make a big bloke look like a fool because across the board, most wingers these days are, you know, bordering on 100 kilos and can run the 111 seconds. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just completely changed. I remember back in the day, you know, you were more worried about the little guys. These days you've got to worry about you know, breaking body parts when you're trying to stop them. So. And the tries they can score as oh, well, mate. Look, look at Brett Morris last week. And uh, I think probably David Mead would be one of the guys a little bit smaller these days in stature, but they can still all score a freaky try, can't they? That's right. It's great to see the winger getting the recognition they deserve. They, uh, they've been, <laughs> you know, time, mate, considered time, the blokes mate. who hang around footy teams for so long now. So it's really good to to see them getting the uh, yeah, accolades. About time they get some credit there. Great story on Semi Randranda in the magazine this week. Okay, it's that time of the show again where we do the Moles tip of the week. Now, I've had a chat to him. Eric, this does concern your club. He's told me that Wade Graham's asking price now is 500000 a year to stay at the Sharks. You're his mate. What do you reckon? Mate, probably the form player in our club, despite the 0-3 record we have at the moment. If he can get it, good on him. If he does get it, I will be his best friend. Bit of cash freed up, of course, boys, with uh, Andrew Fafita moving on. I've got to say, Wade Graham, as you said, Eric, fantastic start. Luke Lewis, a real leader, back rower in that team out so far with that World Cup injury. I think Wade Graham stepped up big time with him out. He's a rep player of the future. I think the Sharks should, uh, should fork that out. 500 grand is a lot. Not quite as much as what you're on to uh, come on Friday Arvo footy each week, but it's getting close. Uh, no, as I said, boys, I think he'd be worth every cent of it. How come you haven't paid me yet? <laughs> oh, that's in with accounts. It's coming. It's coming. That's it from Rugby League Week's Friday Arvo footy. I'm off to get Eric paid. Enjoy the footy this week. We'll see you next week. <laughs>